Are you ready? For what? Oh, oh, wow. Uh, okay. Confidence. <sighs> Crazy love hawk. All right. Whoa, hey, what are you doing? Dude, is sex a trend in animal movies or am I just weird for pointing this out? The jugs haven't set in yet, but rest assured, Rio is one of the best animated romance stories for animals. That was a mouthful. It takes two unlikely characters I thought would never have romantic chemistry and actually creates a spark, which I think is extremely believable. Sure, these blue macaws are some of the last of their kind, so like you can say, oh, they were just gonna mate or like um, be together anyway, but that's definitely not the case. Like the way they tell this story, it's extremely impactful, their romance. And I can safely say this is one of the first animated first kisses I genuinely believe, I wholeheartedly believe they were in love when they kissed. Like, I, it, dude, it's amazing, this story. Now, if you guys know who I am, I'm a person who's very much a fan of 2D animation, and 3D animation doesn't really sit too well with me. But at the same time, I think this is some of the best 3D animation has been in sort of like this sort of plain, not stylized uh, style, <laughs> not stylized. An example that comes to mind is like Claws. It's a 3D animated movie and it's extremely stylized to where that 3D animation actually looked good. It actually looks good and um, something that doesn't really look good is like, every illumination film <laughs> it's not that every illumination film doesn't necessarily look good it's just that like it's so it's so safe and mediocre and it has no real identity that's why the mario movie although there was some very good lighting there was a very good animation like at the end of the day the animation was just like well it's nothing it's basic but real is extremely different real actually reminds me a lot of the lion king which i just reviewed it has so much vibrant colors so like real it makes real look so beautiful rio de janeiro is just a beautiful place obviously there's like some bad areas but there's bad areas in every place like come on a lot of the shots in this movie especially when they're in the sky are just beautiful so vibrant so full of color and life and just the birds in general they're just so colorful i'm so glad this movie was made and they put a lot of care and effort into these animations there is never a dull moment when looking at this movie because your eyes are just looking at everything and just it is soaking in all the colors all the liveliness of it this it makes real look so damn beautiful and i think that's the biggest respect to real as a country i'm not gonna say country oh my god rio is not a country it's a city in brazil okay i know that i know that i would never play you guys okay i'm a youtuber i have to be educated about these things i can't be honest with you guys every species animations actually feel super distinct and super lively like the monkeys the monkeys are very like rapid in movements and like they're, they're just crazy overall, like the birds, they're just very elegant, very beautiful, and it showcases throughout. The only thing that really lacks is the human designs, because making humans in 3D, it, it kind of sucks when they're not stylized. My only real gripe about the animation being the humans, but you know, the dogs, even the dogs, like, they look very lively and very, I don't know, like, in place. Going to the music, the music is amazing. It feels very in character to the scenery we're at, Brazil. Like, it, it, like everything just matches it, except for, like, you know, the song, Let Me Take You to Rio. Like, I think that, that that's the only excuse. Not to say it's a bad song, per se. It's a decent song, but, like, all the other songs kind of have, like, that very Brazil vibe as if I know what Brazil vibe is, but you, you know what I'm saying. Hot Wings being the biggest earworm here. I'm a fly, 
fly just like a bird. But you are a bird. Oh, yeah, you're right. So let me fly just like a rocket. Then. Okay. Fly so high where I need to come down for oxygen. Hey. I don't know what made them go so hard in this song, both visually and musically, but they did it, and it's amazing. I'm fly, fly just like a bird. <laughs> it's such an earworm, like holy lord this song has been stuck in my head for like the past 10 years i've been playing this song on repeat since i was a kid i was in love with this song and um annie hathaway's part like it just it it, it set off a feeling in me that i cannot describe because youtube is very bad any half the way vocalizing made me attracted to jewel and i mean as a kid also also i already said I already said this okay i am attracted to people who can sing not necessarily the animals or the characters just the singers okay that's very different i'm just trying to say but yeah the music is absolutely superb and now going into the story the story is it's 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 interesting to say the least i'm kind of like half and half on the story the romance for once actually carries the story and like is the leading part of the story um the other parts of the story is just like i don't know you could live without it it's it's mainly it feels like filler just like uh, with a little salt put on as flavor <laughs> like blue the blue macaw who is the main character of this story um, as a kid, they saw all of their family, all of their friends get poached and uh, taken away, except for them. They were the lone survivor, and so they got uh, rescued by this girl whose name is so fucking rememberable, I'll tell you what. Oh, it's Linda! Listen, Linda. Yeah, anyway, Blue gets rescued by Linda and gets raised by Linda, and... Um, he gets to be a very sheltered individual. He He's basically living kind of like a human and not necessarily like a pet, which I'm absolutely fine with. Like, I do that to my animals majority of the time, except, you know, when they do something wrong, like, I don't know, poop on the floor, like, for no fucking reason, they fucking live like animals for sure. <laughs> but yeah, Linda and Blue are living a very mundane, very basic life, and um, this random... <laughs> This random guy named Tulio just kind of just walks into their bookshop because he saw a blue macaw and he's just like, oh my god, this is one of the last blue macaws on earth and thank god he's a male so that he can mate with the female. Um, I guess Godspeed that that's luckily happening. Um, but um, yeah, you should bring in your blue macaw to our foundation, not our foundation, uh, facility in order to mate with Jewel, who is another blue macaw, who is a female blue macaw. And Linda at first is just like, well, I obviously don't want to do that. I just fucking met you. This is kind of weird. This is kind of strange. All this information out of nowhere. But ultimately, after a few days, she just gives in. And then Blue... <laughs> Blue gets to meet Jewel later on after they fly to Rio de Janeiro. And in Rio, Blue gets to meet Jewel, and Jewel is obviously trying to escape. She doesn't want to be here. She wants to be out in the wild. And Blue doesn't necessarily understand that because, you know, his mission is to fuck. <laughs> and so, like, that's that's kind of what he's trying to do. And you know, he gets a little freaky deaky, and Jewel is just like... Ain't no fucking way I'm fucking you. <laughs> right before they're about to get down with the dirty, okay, um, some poacher just comes in and steals both of the birds, like, very conveniently. Now, Blue and Jewel get stuck in this cage and gets chained together, which they'll be chained together for, like, majority, if not, like, 90, 90 minutes of the runtime. They get chained together in a cage, and they get thrown in with all these other exotic birds, which these poachers are gonna sell off for money, obviously. And uh, they have uh, the poachers have this little cockatoo, cockatoo, cock. <laughs> yeah, they have this cockatoo, which serves as the antagonist, as the person who's basically going to be hunting uh, Blue and Jewel down after uh, they escape from their prison. And in my personal opinion, Nigel the cockatoo is very charismatic, very funny, and I don't know, I like them as a villain. I think. They're, they're kind of like a chill villain. I don't think they're like a villain per se. They're antagonists because they don't necessarily do anything too evil. It's just that like it's implied. So 
they're not the best villain, but they're a fun character overall. But yeah, anyway, when Blue and Jewel escape the poachers, they are basically still chained together and they have to learn how to cooperate together in order to you know get this thing off or at least get to places get to where they want to go and throughout the movie there's a lot of trials and tribulations they have to go through being chained together which creates a bond within both of them and i think it's great they actually start communicating and they actually start understanding each other as time goes on with the chain and i think it's honestly very beautiful very believable and right when the chain gets off, they get, they uh, they they're going to Luis's place, which is a dog, a pit dog who has a lot of tools in order to get this chain off, and they just get it off with saliva, which doesn't really matter. It's fucking disgusting. But yeah, ignoring all that part, when the chain is finally off, Blue sort of recognizes that you know their their sort of like time is up. They fulfilled what they needed to do because the whole point of like traveling and spending time together, it was because they were forced to. And so when the chain is actually off and Jewel is able to fly on her own, Blue is just like, well, this means nothing. I'll go back home. You'll go back to your, uh, your home. And, you know, this will mean nothing at the end of the day. And he kind of wears it in a very, like, stuck-up attitude because, you know, he's a man who can't apparently talk about his feelings to a girl he spent time with, he spent, like, a couple days with, and she probably doesn't even care. Like, th there's no losing if you tell this girl how you feel or at least the feelings you've gathered throughout your travels. There's no losing. If, if she says no, then you were going to leave anyway. Regardless, that causes a conflict and... Joel flies off and Blue just walks his mosey way back home or at least tries to anyway. Joel gets caught by Nigel who has been tracking them down the whole time and it takes them back to the poachers which they will be flying or like setting off the fly I don't know where just just, just fly off the island fly off Rio. He was tracking Joel and so he finally got Joel he takes them to the poachers and he's trying to bait Blue in order to like, uh, you know, save Jewel in order so he can capture him as well. And so Blue catches word that uh, Jewel's been captured and Blue, Blue just tries to like, you know, save her obviously because you know, he still has feelings and he probably still feels bad about the whole transaction that happened. Yeah, Blue ends up getting caught as well alongside all of his friends and they are in the sky about to be flown to, I don't know, wherever the poacher is going. And so Blue learns how to break out. But yeah, Blue escapes and all these other birds start escaping as well as Blue starts to free them. And one of the things that happen is that uh, Jewel gets her wing crushed by a cage. And um, so Jewel can't really do too much because of it um and while everyone else is flying to freedom she's actually getting sucked out at the back of the plane and Blue who can't fly um tries to basically save her he dives for her and we get this very iconic very beautiful scene right here no! No! This is genuinely one of the most beautiful moments in animation history, and I don't care if you disagree. This kiss is beyond earned in my opinion. Risking your life to save someone you have feelings for, and just like expressing those feelings in your own sort of way, and having her just reciprocate it back with a kiss, I don't know, that's just extremely strong and the best part of the movie. I've seen a lot of romance movies, and I gotta say, this is the one that does it the best. The first kiss, the best. After the kiss, Blue feels like he can fly, and he ends up flying Jewel to safety, and blah, 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 some things happen, you know. Uh, 
they they live their life in the jungle well some with the jungle so like alongside linda and uh tulio uh and also just the jungle it's like under a watchful eye and then the movie ends so it's like a very good movie i i okay maybe not very good but yeah this movie actually means a lot to me and i gotta say like <laughs> I don't know, like, I was very involved and very touched throughout watching this movie over again. Is it as strong as I once thought? No, but the romance is just, it was super refreshing and super beautiful to see. I don't know, an actual romance story actually feel impactful and like, earned overall the rest of the story was kind of lacking when they weren't together or just like trying to bond together it, it was just like mainly traveling or like things that doesn't necessarily matter like things with the humans like the humans are kind of like the biggest side piece of this story that nobody really cares about alongside this kid which i guess they wanted us to care about but at the end of the day i don't really care about them like i get they're homeless they have no parents but I don't even think we see them in the sequel, like, what the hell? Other than that, very solid, very vibrant movie, and I gotta say, I'm gonna give this movie a solid s Shit. I gotta give this movie a solid six. I was about to give it a seven, but then I thought about it, and I'm like, dude, there's a lot of filler, and there's like a lot of moments to where I just didn't really care i just wanted to go back to like the connection the romance and there was just a lot of stalling on that i think a six is appropriate for me which is it's still sort of good it's not anything bad but like you know i was thinking a seven but it's just not a seven for me it's a six anyway how's it going pups it's a canine i'll never ever understand what my hands are doing